Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to our weekly family connections. Uh, today we are going to be talking about our summer programs that uh, we have scheduled with Snyder ISD. And um, let me introduce our panelists that are with us. And then we have a couple more panelists that should be joining us uh, shortly. I'm Rachel McLean. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Learning and Innovation with the district. We have Valerie Morris as our public information officer. And uh, Jesus Gomez is our district um, director of equity and um, inclusion. And so if anyone needs um, language supports, Jesus uh, is with us. Uh, he will pop into the chat um, instructions on uh, how to get language supports. And then Valerie has already added in the chat. But if you have questions as we are going, uh, through today, please add those to the Q&A feature or into the chat feature, and we will try to answer as many of those questions live as possible. Our other two panelists just joined us, and so those are the most important panelists, um, not that Valerie and Jesus are not important, um, but these two know the details about our summer program. Um, Anna Montoya is our district director of our ACE program, and John Rush um, is our summer program's principal. And um, we were just getting started good when you guys were able to join us. Uh, Anna and John have been on a state presentation, I think, talking about our summer programs. Is that correct? Yes. Our yes. summer recruitment initiative, we were highlighted on the Texas um, summer program. So that was pretty neat. Oh, that's exciting. Um, well, we will go ahead and get started. We've had some questions that have been submitted uh, already from parents and family members. Um, and again, if you have questions as we're going along, please feel free to pop those in. Um, so first of all, when, well, what summer programs are we gonna be offering at Snyder this year and what grades will be served? So this year we're going to offer, um, it is still the ACE program. It is now called the Jumpstart ACE. It's an additional uh, program where we are able to target more students. Uh, this one is focused on pre-K through fifth, and um, it is based on a little bit of um, academics, math and reading specifically, and some enrichment activities such as, um, you know, greenhouse, um, green thumb stuff, PE, social emotional skills, art, um, different STEM activities. At the junior high, we will offer our regular ACE program to junior high students that have a previously attended ACE or are referred to by a campus admin. Um, academic summer program is going to be offered at the junior high. However, uh, we do not have full details on that yet. That's, that's still a work in progress. I do know that the recruitment will come from campus admin and they will be contacting parents. So for the meantime, that's, we, we will have a program. We just um, don't know how, how uh, who all will be right. attending. I think the junior high team of deans have been contacting some parents. So if, yes. um, as far as academic uh, needs, but the uh, Jumpstart uh, is for pre-K through five, and that will be, um, we'll talk about, I guess, a lot of our time today is going to be spent talking about Jumpstart. Um, high school will also, just having high school parents on the line, high school will also be offering an academic summer camp or summer program, uh, mainly focused on credit recovery, uh, so, um, or needing to make up some attendance, and um, so high school and junior high academic programs will, will look pretty similar and that it'll be uh, credit recovery and attendance makeup opportunities. Um, so what are the dates and the times for, for Jumpstart? So, we, oh, the, go ahead. Oh, for um, Jumpstart for our pre-K through fifth grade, we're gonna run June 14th through July 30th, going from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, we may have to adjust the times a little bit. We do plan on doing our field trips probably mostly on Fridays, but so those times may get adjusted on field trip days. Well, those are the fun days too. Um, we love field trips. So um, who are you recommending should attend Jumpstart? Any student that needs that extra push, you know, parents that feel that their children um, have developed gaps or you know, have seen an increase in the gaps in their their learning, you know, just their reading level, uh, their performance. Um, 
we really recommend it and teachers are seeing, you know, they are reaching out to the parents. And so if your teacher reaches out to you, I really recommend that you, you get on board with it. It just will benefit your child. Um, students, again, the junior high students that will be referred um, from the campus, I think it's also going to be mainly focused on completing the coursework uh, that um, they were assigned this year, so. Right, the grade level coursework. Yes. Um, we've had a couple of questions come in to the q and I think as we go through our questions, we're going to answer both of those. Um, but well, let me go ahead and take this first one um, as we are talking about how parents can request for their student to attend Jumpstart. And this question, um, how will parents know if they have a spot in the program? So how do, how do parents, if the, if the teachers, if the parent still wants their child to attend, teacher doesn't necessarily, you know, say, hey, I want, we recommend your child to attend. Um, can parents request it? And how will they know if they've gotten a spot in the program? Yeah, um, anyone who wants to right now can go ahead and request because we want um, to service as many students as we possibly can. Um, right now, there is a flyer with a link on it on our website um, that just parents can go to. They can click on that link. They can fill out the Google form. Um, if that's not possible, they can call um, Snyder ISD um, and one of us can click on the form and get it filled out for them. Um, we can just simply ask them the questions through that or if they need to go up to the school and get some assistance there, we're, however we need to do it to get make sure that kid is on the list. Now, if they're around May, we uh, should have our list pretty much completed and by then we'll be sending out some little letters and notes to let you know that your child has been accepted or where we're at in the process. Okay, so in May, there'll be a, a more information that's mailed to the parents. Yes, as a follow-up as to who's accepted or who's not. And hopefully we get everybody. We, 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 we hope we can service everyone. Right, okay. Um, I'm typing into the chat Anna's direct number and her email. Um, so if the Google form is a, if, or, you know, you don't have access to uh, internet or Google forms, uh, there's the email or the phone number because, and Anna, you're taking, um, kind of tracking that as, as people are calling in. Yes, we're, we're helping parents register and um, responding to emails, so. Okay, um, so uh, another question online, one that we're going to be answering, um, will the children stay in their age group or by grade um, or all, like all pre-K through five kids, are they in together? They are going, currently they will be um, housed at the current campus they're enrolled in and in the current grade level, the one they are in, enrolled in right now. Um, and they will all be, it's gonna be separate. You know, they're with the teacher, pretty much we've recruited, um, we've, just as we have been on the recruitment, student recruitment process, we also have in a teacher recruitment. So we have teachers of all grade level, of every grade level teaching. So they are separate. No one will, you know, it's not going to be one big cluster of students. Every student will be in their own grade level with their own grade, with their group of students. Much like they attend school. Now. Yeah, it right. really will be. It really is just a more interactive, hands-on approach instead of your, your regular, but it, it is. Okay. So um, will we be offering any specific program this summer for our bilingual students? There will be a bilingual program. First of all, um, we have recruited bilingual teachers, so they will be available. Um, there is going to be a, an interest service mailed out to the bilingual classes just to gauge interest as in the past. And if it if we find the need, then the just a bilingual specific class will be created just for that. Um, not saying that they will have support, it just won't be bilingual specific unless we see that need. But right. And so we will that survey will be going out. Um, it April. will be going out in April. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, you know, this is an odd year. We are ending school late. And um, 
we're starting school pretty much at our normal time, which would be early August. Um, so summer is short. Uh, we knew, and this has just been an odd school year. So COVID has impacted a lot of things. And this is one of the reasons that our summer programs are so important is because we're wanting to kind of recoup as much as possible for our students as they come into the school year next year. So but why should parents send their students to school? And because it's, it's important to have some downtime, right? And, and you know, really, I think we all agree that a break's important for all of us from time to time. However, we also got to consider the benefits of really pushing forward um, with this as well. Um, the past year, we've had many unexpected breaks, not only COVID, but we had that week off in February to the nice little freeze and everything. So that's caused a lot of interruptions in our academic growth. So um, studies have actually shown that students who attend a summer learning program at least 95% of the time not only show uh, academic improvement, but they also gain some much needed social skills. So um, also this is not going to feel like it's a normal school day. It's gonna have kind of a camp feeling to it. Um, and we are taking those field trips, which provides that extra break and they everybody gets a little um, opportunity to maybe experience something that they haven't already. So um, hopefully we do have um, a lot of that plus the summer program is really not extended with a lot of pressures because you're not worried about pressing for grades or anything like that. We do want you to learn. We do want you to be engaged, but you really don't have to worry about, oh, am I passing this or not? It's a it's a little bit more relaxed. Right. In the Jumpstart program. Yes. And credit recovery. You still got yes, not credit recovery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's... We're talking pre-K through <laughs> fifth. K through five, you're right. Um, credit recovery. If you don't want to come to academic summer school, then take care of the business between now and June yeah. 11th. Um, so I know we've already posted this, but I'm just gonna reiterate it because we have quite a few attendees and some um, have joined in after we got started. So you guys said the summer flyer is on the Snyder ISD website. Um, and I believe Valerie has popped into the chat. Valerie may wanna add that back into the chat just so everybody sees it again, um, where they can find the information on our website. But you also have set up a, a tiny URL. Yes, that's attached to the flyer, actually. Oh, OK. OK, so the flyer that's on the website. Very good. I, I see that. Um, so where will our summer programs be held? And I think you mentioned on the campuses, but how will that work? So, so what, oh, go ahead, Rush. Whatever grade they're currently in, that is the campus that they will be housed on for the summer. So if I'm pre-K through three right now, I'm going to be at Snyder Primary. If I'm fourth and fifth grade right now, I'm going to be at Snyder Intermediate. If I'm sixth through eight, I'm going to be over at the junior high. Okay, makes perfect sense. Uh, will we be running buses this summer and are we going to be providing food? Those are important questions. Yes, right. we will be providing transportation to each campus. Um, of course, we'll have a, a reg we'll have to figure out a bus route and, you know, um, map out where drop off and pick up are, um, but that is available. And lunch will be, breakfast and lunch will be provided by SFE. And um, they also, they will house the summer feeding program as well, so. Okay, so even if you're not attending summer programs, we'll still be offering our summer feeding that everybody in the community, all students in the community are, um, can, can use and benefit from, correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so uh, an important question, hard to answer, but will masks be required this summer? And yes. we're, we're just following the Board of Trustees and Snyder ISD policy. So as it's required by Snyder ISD, we're going to have them on. Okay. So and just kind of an update on, you know, where we're standing with that. Um, the, although the governor did, um, you know, the, drop the mask requirement for the state, uh, ISDs or school districts are still responsible for, for uh, using masks unless the Board of Trustees um, takes action and, and votes on not using that. And so at the current time, that's where we're at, we're still uh, following our mask policy. And basically we're wanting to do whatever 
we can to keep as many of our students in the classroom face to face for instruction. And so um, we, we're just, we're being as cautious and, and taking as many precautions as possible um, until, um, you know, we have, we have some more data coming in. So we have a board meeting in another week or so, and that'll be reviewed again at that time, just update for parents. Um, okay, so this kind of goes back to the, the, we got the short summer, um, if a family has a vacation planned for two weeks during Jump Start, what do you guys recommend? Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we we know that summer's short, and we know that it's a time when families want to get together and spend time and travel. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, like we've said earlier, studies show that 95% of attendance rate really helps and promotes that academic growth. Um, but we want everyone to be successful. So I say you go ahead and you sign your child up. Um, let's get them there the days they possibly can get there so that we can help them as much as possible. But make sure you're in communication with the summer staff that's on that campus saying, hey, my kid's going to be out for two weeks or my kid's going to be out this week and this week. Because if not, um, we will be calling you and blowing your phone up because uh, we're, we want that child there and we want to help them be successful. And one of the things is not only do studies show that, but as part of this grant, um, attendance is a requirement. Um, you know, that you have a certain amount of days. We won't, we're not going to go into the, the details of, of that because it can vary for everyone, but most definitely 95% attendance is what the state is recommending with the funding that's being provided. <clears throat> so, just because they have a vacation planned doesn't knock them out, but no. wanting to have everybody there as much as possible. Um, just kind of as a side note, uh, Mr. Rush, in, you know, talked about the 95% uh, attendance. TEA did release uh, some, some data, Texas Education Agency released some data uh, back in January that shows that um, our students statewide, not Snyder, statewide students, are about six months behind where they were at the beginning of, um, or you know, in, in the last school year. And so they look at that by statewide assessments and, and they look at that um, as far as some data that they've collected you know, through different avenues, but um, that's significant. And so we always experience summer learning loss for our students. That's just a kind of a given. We've done these jumpstart programs in the past, but when you add in those months of, COVID loss in the spring of last year, and then combined with um, our attendance, you know, where we've had a lot of our kids um, miss 10 to 14 days because of COVID exposure. Uh, I've, going off the top of my head, um, actually, I'll pull it up before I say it, but we've had, you know, quite a bit of our, our, especially our primary students that have been out. So anything that we can do to help support their learning and be grade level ready for the next school year will be great. Um, Okay, so let's talk about, um, um, well, I think the rest of our questions are pretty much, you guys just hit those because it was specific attendance requirements. And so Anna, you said that there are attendance requirements for this program, um, and but you will be looking at it on an individual student basis? Definitely. Um, one of the things also is, um, What's most important is that they're attending when we're offering our academic piece. Um, we are, we do, are looking to make sure they stay from eight to three. However, we know some of those summer camps, we don't wanna discourage parents that participate in some of our summer camps that are hosted throughout our town. You know, we want our students involved in as much as possible. So if you communicate uh, with myself, Mr. Rush, your campus coordinators, uh, your campus ACE coordinators will be the ones that will be overseeing the uh, attendance and everything. So if you communicate it to them, hey, I'm gonna, they're gonna join the softball, the basketball camp, you know, we're doing this. And you're able to bring, you know, Bring your child, make sure that we're working their schedule to make sure their academics are, are being met um, because that's really the important tracking piece of this funding is their academics. So if you have a 
camp and um, you talk to the site coordinator, we'll make sure to arrange their schedule so that they can go to that camp. And then when you bring them back, they'll be able to participate in their academic uh, stuff. Field trips are um, highly encouraged, but they are not a requirement. So that'll, you know, that kind of will give them a four day week. So we would love for them to come every day, but because the field trips are part of the enrichment piece, we are not making them mandatory. Okay, so we've had some questions come in on the Q and A. Um, uh, we a parent asking how many days that their student or their that they're allowed to miss, um, and if for some reason their child doesn't want to attend. So say they start for two weeks and then they don't want to attend any longer. How will that work? Um, if they don't want to attend any longer, I mean, we leave, we can't force them to come. So, so you no know, compulsory attendance <clears throat> for the summer. Yes. Right. Um, but however, of course, if we be get to that point where, uh, you know, we are limited in space, then um, things like that could potentially, you know, affect your, your ability to be able to enroll in other years. You know, if the child just doesn't have a, um, not that we are saying they're not going to be able to, but if we have to pick and choose, you know, if we get to that point where, okay, we have an abundance of students that registered, we have to prioritize those that are really committed and parents that are committed and, and ready to send their students so that to actually help them grow, not just use it as a childcare facility, you know. I think sometimes that. Um, okay, I see I a think question. That's what I think that's what one of the questions is about. If they're, they're planning a vacation or whatever, will that affect them, the student, in keeping their spot for the summer program? I believe that's what the question is asking. So we're not really anticipating that issue. No, no. If they go on vacation, they will still have their spot. It will still be available. Okay. Yeah. And then if a parent needs after... Uh, three care? Uh, are there any options available or does the program end at three in the summer? For Snyder ISD, um, I know I had a parent say, will ACE be available? Uh, the summer program is ACE. It is, our, you know, it's an initiative between um, just the school and ACE program combined. There, I spoke to um, a rep, well, I, I gotten some information from the representative from the youth center Scurry County Youth Center, and they will be given a discount to students that are enrolled in um, in this our summer program and just want to attend the three to five thirty. There is a one time program fee, I believe, um, it was a forty five dollar for the first child and thirty dollars at thereafter. Um, it's a one time fee, and, but that's with us signing off you know, their child getting on the bus, we're transporting them there. So it, it there is a possibility and we can work that out for aftercare, but it won't be through us. It'll be with the local youth center. And then, but they would just need to um, email you or give you a call and you can give information about how to, how to get that. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. Um, and then one other question, uh, how is Jumpstart different than summer school? So summer school used to be a little mandatory time for those students who uh, failed the STAR test. And it was really focused on two weeks of instruction. Let's get you ready for the STAR test. We're fortunate the STAR test is um, it's still going to be around, but it's not going to be counted as a pass-fail type thing for the kid. It's just going to be mainly for our data. So what we are really With Canva, doing, anyone can create customize and share a design in just a few clicks oh, oh, got there. <laughs> but uh so our uh but so the jump start is really going to be focused on getting kiddos up and ready to um go for the next year and so it's not really focused on the testing and, and so it has a more fun feel to it um especially doing the campy type things rewards and games and all that fun stuff that come involved with it and you guys have worked uh, with some like summer program experts to identify the curriculum and the framework. And so it's it's really going to have a, a, a tremendously different feel than what's 
uh, happened in the past, correct? Most yeah. definitely. We've been working with a t uh, design and implementation team since um, October. And, you know, we've really looked at different, we've looked at different summer specific curriculums and, and you know, it's just, it'll be a different feel. Good. I'm excited. Um, I think in the last few minutes, uh, we've got about five minutes left on our time together. One thing we did not talk about that is an, another summer program that um, if, if we have any parents of eighth graders that are on the call, we will be having a summer bridge camp uh, for students that are in eighth grade going into ninth grade. And they are signing up for one of our PTEC um, programs at the high school. So our PTEC programs are students uh, start earning college credits some students start earning college credits as soon as they're ninth grade year. And so we spend um, some time working with our students uh, to help them kind of have that mind shift from high school to, to more college focused activities. So um, eighth grade parents will be receiving information about that summer bridge program. And then um, we'll also have some potential opportunities for our upperclassmen to do some summer bridge activities um, as well. So additional information will be coming out with, um, with that uh, in the next few weeks. So another different, um, another summer program that'll be exciting. So, all right, we have about four minutes left. I want to check and make sure we do not have any questions um, in our Q&A and any questions in our chat. Um, Dr. McLean, one yes. thing that I did want to add, and just this is just for clarification purposes. I, I know uh, Anna mentioned that the the youth center uh, multiple times earlier for the question about child care after three p.m. And that just in case for those that don't know that the youth center is formally the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, just so you know, whenever we refer to the youth center, we're talking about uh, what was known as the Boys and Girls Club. Right. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to take a final call for questions uh, from our uh, attendees. So lots of great information been shared. I appreciate all of our uh, panelists uh, for your attendance and your uh, knowledge. And we will be back at five o'clock today talking about the same topic. But as usual with our family connections, we have different questions come in from the uh, family uh, members. And sometimes our discussions go a little bit different. And then always our family connections, uh, this one as well as our past family connections are posted on our website. And we encourage our families to always check those out. We've got lots of great information from the past few weeks uh, on our website. So I appreciate it. Uh, we will see everybody back at five o'clock. Bye-bye.